The film picks up from the previous sequel's climax, where Sam successfully took down the ghost face killer, revealed to be her boyfriend Richie. However, rumors and accusations circulate in Woodsboro, casting suspicion on Sam's involvement in the murders. Seeking help from psychologist Dr. Christopher, Sam faces media scrutiny due to her familial ties to the original Ghostface killer. Ah, another day, another murder suspicion in Woodsboro. Can't they schedule a town meeting without a side of suspicion? A year later, the story unfolds with Laura, a film studies professor, waiting for her date Reggie in a restaurant. A call from Reggie takes an ominous turn, and she finds herself alone in a dark alley. A ghost face killer, later identified as high school student Jason, brutally attacks and kills Jason, a classmate of Sam's sister Tara, is revealed when he receives a call from his roommate Greg, who had used a voice modulator to trick Laura. The killers, aiming to complete Richie's film, target Sam and Tara next. Meanwhile, in New York City, Sam faces public ostracization due to an online conspiracy painting her as the mastermind of recent killings. Welcome to the roller coaster of Sam's life. From hero to potential villain, all in a year's work. Talk about a dramatic career shift. In her therapy session with Dr. Christopher, Sam shockingly describes how she killed Richie, feeling justified and without remorse. The therapist, troubled by Sam's revelations, refuses further treatment. Upset, Sam encounters a crime scene on her way home. In their apartment, Sam discovers Tara has joined a frat party against her advice. Tara's friends, Annika, Mindy, Chad, and Ethan, try to keep her safe from strangers. Despite objections, Tara accepts an invitation from a stranger at the party, determined to make her own choices. Meanwhile, Jason, searching for Greg, stumbles upon a gruesome discovery. Greg's dismembered body in the refrigerator. Another ghost face killer appears and fatally attacks Jason, adding to the escalating tension. A confrontation erupts at the party when a man grabs Tara, leading to a fight between him and Chad. Sam intervenes, using a taser to subdue the aggressor. When in doubt, Tasers seem to be the go-to accessory for sibling protection. Who needs pepper spray? Tara, frustrated by Sam's protectiveness, leaves the party, urging Sam to leave her alone. In another altercation with a group of girls accusing her of murder, Sam finds support in her neighbor-turned-boyfriend, Danny. Their moment is interrupted when Chad urgently calls Sam home, informing her about recent ghost face killings. Panicking, Sam orders Tara to pack for a quick escape, but Tara rebels demanding confirmation from Detective Wayne Bailey, Quinn's father. When Detective Wayne reveals Sam's ID at a crime scene and the presence of a ghost face mask, the situation takes a grim turn. Sam receives a call from Ghost Face Killer, revealing Jason and Greg's plan to continue Richie's film. The killer threatens them, leading the sisters to escape to a grocery store. Unfortunately, the killer attacks bystanders, and the sisters seek refuge in the police station. During a meeting with Detective Bailey, Sam and Tara learn that the mask found at the crime scene has Richie's DNA. Tara adds that the ghost face killer who attacked them wore a more worn-out mask. The sisters meet FBI Special Agent Kirby Reed, a survivor of the 2011 ghost face killings. Despite the discovery of a ghost face mask with DNA from Charlie and Jill, previous ghost face killers, Detective Bailey declares Sam and Tara persons of interest in the double homicide case, preventing them from leaving town. Confronted by a swarm of reporters, including Gail Weathers, Sam faces questions about the killings. Tara impulsively punches Gail, who had previously published a damaging book about Sam. Despite Gail's plea to help catch the ghost face killer, the sisters leave in anger. Sam's troubles escalate when the killer murders her psychiatrist, Dr. Christopher, framing her for the killing. The killer leaves the mask of Roman Bridger, the Scream 3 murderer, at the crime scene. Kirby believes the killer is taking the murder franchise in a new direction. Mr. Bailey suspects Sam, thinking she's hiding mental health issues, punches and press conferences. Looks like Sam's not winning any popularity contests amidst murder accusations, but framing a psychiatrist's death. That's a whole new level of ghost face mischief. Tara's friend, Mindy speculates about the ongoing murders, suspecting Quinn, Ethan, Annika, and Sam as newcomers to her life. As night falls, a video of Sam fighting with college girls goes viral, making her the suspected killer. While Tara, Mindy, and Chad comfort Sam, Quinn is alone in her room and about to be attacked by Ghostface. Danny spots the killer from his apartment and tries to warn Quinn. After Danny shares the snap of Quinn being attacked, the atmosphere becomes tense. The killer throws Quinn's lifeless body out of her room, prompting Chad and Tara to escape. The killer targets Mindy and Annika with brutal stabs. Mindy sustains a minor cut, while Annika is seriously injured. 
Sam searches for knives, but finds them missing, using a holder to subdue the killer. Chad and Tara return for help, but they can't unlock the door. When the killer breaks through, they lock themselves in a back room, spotting Danny in the window. They decide to escape using Dan Annie's ladder. As Sam and Mindy leave the apartment, Annika, with a severe stomach wound, instructs them to go first. However, the killer enters the room as Annika tries to cross the ladder. <laughs> Detective Bailey, grieving over Quinn's death, remains determined to find the killer. Sam tells Danny that someone removed all the knives before the attack, raising suspicions among Chad, Mindy, and Ethan. Ethan defends himself, claiming he was at a study hall with a hundred people. The group starts suspecting each other as the truth remains elusive. When Trust takes a nosedive, everyone's a suspect. Reporter Gale provides an important clue against the killer and offers assistance in the hunt of Ghost Face Killer. After Kirby arrives, Gale takes the group to a movie theater rented by Jason and Greg under fake names. However, the theater turns out to be a shrine exhibiting all 11 ghost face murderers, including weapons and outfits from each set of attacks. Tara thinks this evidence should be with the police, but Gail's possible bribery raises suspicions. It's revealed that the killer of Jason and Greg must have known about this place. While standing before her father's attire in the shrine, Sam experiences visions of him encouraging her to continue with the killings. To capture the culprit, Detective Bailey plans to track his call with Sam and Tara as decoys. As Sam takes the killer's call and Detective Bailey waits in the garden, Kirby and the others try to trace the call's location. The Ghostface, aware he's being traced, calls from halfway across town in the neighborhood where Gail resides. Kirby, concerned about Gail's safety, doesn't allow her to be involved in the mission. As Sam and Tara drive away from the garden, the Ghostface murderer calls Gail, seeking retribution for her profit from portraying Ghostface killers as villains in her books. In moments, the killer murders Gail's boyfriend, and turns his sights on Gail. Dodging the murderer, Gail tries to access her pistol that fails. The killer overpowers her outside, stabbing her multiple times. Sam and Tara arrive just in time to interrupt the killer's plan. Note to self, when setting traps, make sure the FBI doesn't suspect your designated gun holder. It can get messy. Despite their efforts to keep Gail awake, she succumbs to her injuries and loses consciousness. Sam blames herself and offers herself to the ghost face killer, but Tara steps up reminding her they will protect each other as a family. Danny rushes to comfort Sam, but trust in him is lacking. Tara proposes a plan to lure and trap the ghost face killer in a secure location, using the movie theater with extensive surveillance, security cameras, and FBI assistance from Kirby. They aim to bring the killer to justice. Mr. Bailey will join the group shortly. On the way to the theater, Mindy gets separated, taking another train. As she doesn't trust Ethan, she asks him to stay away. When family reunion turn into a ghost face showdown, it's time for some serious sibling rivalry and stabbings. Inside the train on Halloween, most people wear ghost face masks, but they're harmless. For Mindy and Ethan, it's the opposite. The ghost face killer appears, stabs Mindy, but leaves when the train stops. Ethan calls 911 for help. The group reaches the theater, and Sam instructs Danny to leave. They enact their plan, trapping the killer inside. Kirby holds the gun. Sam, guided by a vision of her father, grabs a knife for self-defense. When Sam can't find Kirby, Mr. Bailey reveals Kirby's FBI firing, making her a suspect. Meanwhile, Chad and Tara grow closer, with Chad confessing his feelings for her. In a shocking turn of events, Chad overpowers the attacker, only for Sam to reveal that Kirby is the killer. However, before they can escape, a new ghost face appears, revealing two killers. Chad is mortally wounded and Sam and Tara are saved by the unexpected arrival of Kirby, who is also covered in blood. Mr. Bailey arrives, accuses Kirby, and shoots at her. Surprisingly, Ethan and Quinn, miraculously alive, reveal themselves as the Ghostface killers. Mr. Bailey is their father, seeking revenge for Richie's death. The three wanted to frame Sam for their killing spree. Bailey wants Sam to wear the Ghostface mask, but Kirby helps Sam escape. Ethan stabs Kirby, and Quinn approaches Sam with a knife. Tara hangs from a rail, urging Sam to let her go so they can fight together. Tara kills Ethan, and Sam overpowers Mr. Bailey, causing them both to fall. Sam poses as the ghost face killer, brutally stabs Bailey, and delivers a fatal blow, claiming his life. Cops arrive with Danny, gaining Sam's trust. Chad is revealed to be alive, and Tara embraces him with a kiss. Mindy, with an improved stab wound, joins Chad in the ambulance. The mask of Sam's father, the ghost face killer, lies abandoned 
hinting at a potential deadly legacy. The movie concludes with a new chapter in Sam's life, joined by her sister Tara and others. If you enjoyed this video, check out another video popping up on your screen now.